folks, Tom Vassell here, and today we're taking a look back at 2014 again, this time in the board game arena with expansions and reprints revisions. One of the things I did when I made my top 10 games for 2014 is I did not include games that had been reprinted or revised, but I want to tell you about a few great ones, and then we'll jump into my top 10 expansions. First of all, King of New York. King of New York was a revised version of King of Tokyo. There's some changes in this one as you can move around in New York as you smash up monsters and such. And it's a highly entertaining game, but it has a very similar feel and fans of King of New York or King of Tokyo will move right into it. There's a lot more emphasis on the fighting than there is about scoring points. So if you like scoring points, you might want to go back to the other one. But if you like fun games, <laughs> then you'll probably like King of New York. Sheriff of Nottingham, which, disclaimer, is the first game in the Dice Tower Essentials line, was a reprint revision of a game called Robin Hood, which was a reprint revision of a game called Heart and Their uh, This is a game about bribing a sheriff. And man, I love this game, which is why I had got it reprinted. Because in it, you are trying to sneak goods by the other players or make them think you're sneaking goods. You want a game where you look people in the eye and say, I'm serious, everything in this bag is legal and they sit there and go i think you're lying you go i'll give you money to say if, if you just let the bag go they're like oh you're definitely lying um uh, i'm opening the bag now and i open the bag and it's legal hilarious sheriff of nottingham uh also saint petersburg was reprinted this year saint petersburg is a game that came out 10 years ago the new reprint of it adds a new phase to the game of goods, which, you know, if you know me, it's like, what? Goods? That's not that big of a deal. But it balances the game out incredibly well. The original game really had an emphasis on the bureaucrats, the aristocrats part of the game. This balanced the game out. This is a classic game, and I think it works especially well with two players. Uh, then there's Blue Man Legends. This is not a game that I was entirely a huge fan of. Blue Moon, when it came out, they sold it as a two-player game with expansion after expansion after expansion. Fantasy Flight with Blue Moon Legends put it all in one box. My friend Z Garcia is a huge fan of this game, and it's glad that it's now all together. Lost Valley was reprinted. I believe the new thing is Lost Valley, the Yukon Gold Rush 1896. It's basically the same game, although they streamlined and fixed parts of it that weren't working so well. It's a game I love about exploration and finding gold and mining that gold and bringing it back. Really gives a strong theme. An excellent game. I'm so glad they reprinted this one. Then there was Lords of Zidit. Lords of Zidit is a reprinting of an older game called Himalaya. Uh, and in this game, you're, I, I don't know what the theme is exactly. You're going around fighting monsters and trying to have the not fewest points in different categories and then having the most in another category. It's kind of an odd scoring, but they just took this, this straight Himalaya theme out and added this gorgeous fantasy theme on top of it. If you like games like um, uh, The Seasons, it uses the same universe as Seasons does. Then Cash and Guns 2.0 came out which actually streamlined caching guns. I didn't even think it needed to be streamlined, but when I played the streamlined version, I said, wow, it works. Also, a cheaper price point went up to two more players, so now eight players, and added a few minor changes, which just made this game really shine. And some people might not like games where you point guns at others, but if you like it even a little bit, fake foam guns and trying to play basically the final scene of Reservoir Dogs uh, out, this game is one that you will like, Cash and Guns. Okay, so now it's time to get to the top 10 expansions for the year. I love expansions. I love when there's a game I love and more comes out for it. Number 10, there were quite a few X-Wing expansions that came out, but the one that was most grandiose and interesting this year was the Tanta IV, the Carillion Corvette, this gigantic ship that just, wow, you put this on the table and suddenly X-Wing becomes something very, very different. And we thought, how is this possible? They're going to have Star Destroyers? No, they have a whole new game coming out for that. But I, this is not the only one. They came out with a great number of expansions this year. The Transport, um, the, uh, the Imperial Aces, and there's a lot of great ships. X-Wing continues to do well with the different models that have come out. Number nine is a small expansion for Revolution called Revolution Anarchy. Revolution is a game in which you're trying to start a revolution, but it's a blind bidding game. Anarchy is a small game that, first of all, lets you go up to five or six players, which is not that big of a deal because I don't really want to play with that many, but it adds in ways to go after other players. 
It adds in some extra spots on the board. It adds just enough to give more options. It actually makes the four player game much more accessible than it was before. Just a tiny little bag, really, that you can throw into the game, but it changes it quite a bit. Like it a lot, that's Revolution Anarchy. Number eight is Lords of Vegas Up, another small expansion, kind of a theme here. In Lords of Vegas, you are taking and building casinos throughout the city. And it, it, this is a game that if you've not, if you play Monopoly and you're looking for something to step up for Monopoly, Lords of Vegas will be there and you're, you're trying to get the right casinos that will give you the right points, take over other people's casinos. Up allowed you to build the casinos up, basically, before you were like spreading out throughout the city. Now you can spread out and you can spread up. It adds a third dimension to the game, which really added a lot of options. And this does add the fifth and sixth player. And in this case, that's actually a pretty cool thing and keeps it tight and fun. Then number seven expansion was Forsaken Lore for Eldritch Horror. Eldritch Horror was a globe-trotting game in which players are trying to stop Cthulhu. Eldritch Horror, uh, uh, Forsaken Lore basically just adds more stuff. And that's one of the best expansions you can have is more stuff. Eldritch Horror has a lot of great decks of cards that you go through and find these adventures, but after a while you might start seeing the same cards over and over again. Uh, Forsaken Lore adds to those piles of cards, so now you're going to see the same adventures less often, and it adds just that much more flavor to the game. Just more stuff. Uh, good enough. Number six is the Guardians of the Galaxy expansion for Marvel Legendary. Now, that's not the only expansion to come out. Paint the Town Red came out this year. The Legendary Villains standalone set expansion. And it was really a toss-up for me because I love the Legendary Villain set. I love how it adds villains. It's its own game, but you can also add them into the game. But, I, uh, but Guardians for the Galaxy... Well, I mean, the success of the movie, notwithstanding, is it just added some fun to be able to shout, I am Groot, added some great new mechanisms to play the Infinity Gauntlet in this game now as possible, uh, added tokens and artifacts and some new mechanisms, which I think really brought life to this system, which I already loved quite a bit. Then, number five expansion for the year is Vengeance for Sentinels of the Multiverse. Sentinels of the Multiverse is a superhero game. Vengeance brought in some really bad guys that were like the good guys from another dimension, which was a cool twist to the game. It added more heroes, but it added stuff that was really hard to fight. And also I thought very full of flavor with a team of heroes and a team of villains that you fought against. And just kind of took the mechanisms of Sentinels of the Multiverse where you work together as a team fighting bad guys and just added a little bit more to it. I thought of all the expansions for Sentinels, this was the strongest one. It just brought out flavor in this story. There's not actually a lot of story in Sentinels, like in the rule books and stuff, but it just kind of comes out through the gameplay. And this one did an excellent job at that. Then number four is Revolution. Not the game Revolution, but the expansion Revolution for Core Worlds. Core Worlds has a great expansion, but Revolution was the second expansion for it, and this expansion is also quite good, where it gave heroes in the game something to do. Heroes in Core Worlds now have their own decks of cards that you draw from, and the more heroes you get, the more your hero deck builds, which could be good and or bad, and added just a smattering of different cards that brings this game, which is one of my favorite deck builders, to a level of just, oh, wow, what am I going to do? So many different options. I like the idea of heroes and them having their own flavor now with their own cards really differentiated them and made them very tempting to draft into your deck and use. So that's Core Worlds Revolution. Then now we're up to number three, the expansion for Seven Wonders Babel. Now, this is actually a two-part expansion where it adds the Tower of Babel, but it also adds these great works that you can put together and work together on. I think both of these two halves of this expansion are better than the previous expansions and they add so much variety add another layer of strategy and actually have brought seven wonders up considerably on my favorite games list there is a ton of content here a tower of babel brings new rules to the game that players can play that will change how the game works that round and the great works at give you kind of a focus point. Are we going to work together to build this and get the rewards or ignore it and take the penalty? Very interesting. Love that there's the two, I mean, they probably could have sold these as two separate expansions, but they're together, Seven Wonders Babel. Then number two 
is the Titans expansion for Cyclades. Now, Cyclades is a great game in which players are using auctioning and stuff to, to bring down these gods and who then they will fight over the Greek islands. Cyclades Titans takes the original board, gets rid of it, brings in a new board with more bigger land masses, giant titans that each player can recruit now to walk around and fighting. It takes Cyclades from a good game to a great game. It has, it makes the fighting in the game so much more interesting. It has these artifacts that players can fight over, really cool models of these gigantic titans. Wow, this took this game so much higher, which is why it went to number two on my list, because I like Cyclades, but when you added this in, it just made the game so much fun. I've had a chance to play it several times this year, and I'm just excited, and this will keep Cyclades in my collection forever, because what a great expansion. And my number one favorite expansion for the year was Cosmic Dominion. Dumb name notwithstanding, I was starting to think Cosmic Encounter was done. Actually, not starting. I thought it. I said it publicly. They don't need any more expansions. When I heard they were doing a fan expansion, though, I was interested because fans can really be involved with the game. The, th the three fans that they put in charge of this expansion have done a magnificent job. This is my favorite expansion for Dominion. I mean, Cosmic Encounter so far. Dominion is my favorite expansion. It adds in so many fun aliens. Aliens that do really kooky, weird, but fun stuff. Aliens that I could introduce to new people to the game and they would understand how they work. It also added in the second half of a rewards deck with even more crazy off the wall stuff, but all of it incredibly fun to play. I love Cosmic Encounter, it's my favorite game, but I would not put any expansion on this list unless I thought it made it much better. Cosmic Dominion, I think, is possibly the best expansion. I, I'm, for me, personally, it is the best expansion. The first expansion is pretty good for new players, but this one just added so much fun stuff. Everything in it I loved. So it was my number one spot for the year. So that's reprints and expansions. We don't got much more left. Come back tomorrow, and we're going to talk a little bit about Kickstarter and how that affected board gaming in 2014. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.